सर अमिताभ बच्चन बहुत बहुत स्वागत सर प्रिवलेज है मेरा ऑनर है कि आज ये किताब जो कि बाई द वे उनकी थर्टीन किताब है वंस अपॉन अ टाइम इन इंडिया पहले तो बहुत बहुत कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन भावना जी को इस किताब के लिए भावना सोमाया जी प्लीज एक फिक्की के फंक्शन में अमित जी के बोलने के बाद सुषमा स्वराज को बोलना था तो सुषमा जी स्टेज पर आई और उन्होंने माइक एडजस्ट किया और कहा कि ये इस तरह से माइक रखा गया है कि आफ्टर बिग बी नो बडी ऑफ हर हाइट कैन स्पीक दिस वेन्यू द क्लब इज द मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट वेन्यू फॉर द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ माई बुक इतना कुछ कह दिया अब कहने को है ही नहीं कुछ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद भावना जी और पेंगुइन को और जितने भी इस कार्यक्रम के साथ संबंधित हैं उन सब को आज मुझे आपने यहाँ आमंत्रित किया उसके लिए मैं अपना आभार प्रकट करता हूँ मैं आया था केवल यहाँ विमोचन के लिए तो किताब लाइए उसका विमोचन कर देता हूँ धन्यवाद that um, in india we don't have the habit of any kind of documentation and a lot of our valued heritage has been lost or is getting lost every day um i'm really thankful to shivain for uh, initiating the heritage concept uh, i was there for the inauguration when we introduced uh, the institution that is now going to be looking after the heritage of films I have volunteered to work in this cause and Shivendra any time as always uh, when you shall need my services I shall always be there but really uh, it's it's wonderful to have Bhavna put all the thoughts together the generations to come will will want to know what happened in the early years and uh, there really is no reference point for it. and i think that uh, for somebody like her to put across the 100 years of cinema in the form of a book which is not like reading a book it's more uh, interesting to to watch it to go through it in a very fun way and i think that's a very novel idea to keep the audiences and the readers attracted to something like this so i compliment you bhavna for that i also feel that um, in the years to come uh, both shivend and you should join up and uh, um, make many more such uh, examples of our heritage it was heartbreaking to see what we saw in the film of how films are being destroyed we used to joke um, during the time when we used to work with film now of course we work with digital that uh, every time um, a take went wrong we used to joke that chalo yaar iski chudiyan to ban jayengi kam se kam whatever film used to be left over at that point of time unki chudiyan banayi jati thi pata nahi abhi bhi banti hai ya nahi banti but uh, can you imagine the amount of valuable footage that has gone into that uh, escapade so thank you shivain thank you bhavna for putting all this together and any time you need any further help to either propagate or to work towards its heritage i shall always be there thank you movie watching habits it's got to do a lot with uh, your childhood memories how did you watch them i have always been curious to know i was born and brought up in allahabad in uttar pradesh and in allahabad uh, the capital cinema was the very prominent uh, theater where we used to go and watch films um in our time parents used to go and wet a film before the children were allowed to go and see it 
तो जो भी फिल्में आती थी और जिसके लिए हम चाहते थे कि हमें जाना है उसे देखने पहले वो देखते थे उसका अनुमान लगाते थे कि ये देखने लायक है कि नहीं बच्चों के लिए उसके बाद हमें इजाज़त मिलती थी वहाँ जाने के लिए कैपिटल थिएटर शायद अब भी है इलाहाबाद में और उसकी यूनिकनेस ये थी कि वो एक सिनेमा थिएटर था लेकिन साथ में एक रेगुलर थिएटर भी था उसके ऊपर स्टेज परफॉर्मेंसेस भी होती थी ऐसा स्टेज बनाया हुआ था वहाँ और कई बार वहाँ पर हमने पृथ्वी राज कपूर और उनकी जो पृथ्वी थिएटर्स ग्रुप था उनका वहाँ पर हमने उनके प्लेस देखे और लॉरन एंड हार्टी की एक फिल्म थी द फ्लाइंग ड्यूस वो मेरी पहली फिल्म थी और उसके बाद जितनी भी ये सिंड्रेला और लिटिल रेड राइडिंग वोट इस तरह की जो फिल्में आती थी डिज्नी की वो देखने जाते थे हिंदी फिल्म शायद जो पहली देखी थी वो शायद जागृति थी वॉट आर योर फेवरेट जैकेट जितने भी जैकेट हैं सब मेरे फेवरेट हैं सबसे ज़्यादा एक तो बता दें नहीं बड़ा मुश्किल है कहना आपने जैसे कहा कि जो पचास का दर्शक था उस समय तो हम लोग को इजाज़त मिल रही थी कि फिल्में जा करके देखें तो वो बहुत ही एक आश्चर्यजनक चीज़ होती थी निरंजन सिनेमा जिस जिसकी हमने अभी चर्चा की वो इसलिए याद है और वो फिल्म इसलिए याद है क्योंकि एयर कंडीशन थिएटर जो था वो एक आविष्कार था बहुत ही अद्भुत लगता था हमें यार एक सिनेमा घर जो है वो एयर कंडीशन हो सकता है तो वो याद हमारे साथ थी और रुपये पैसों की बात की तो हम लोग तो वो सामने जो लकड़ी के बेंच होते थे उस पर बैठते थे आठ आना टिकट होता था उसका क्योंकि आज के ज़माने में पचास पैसे हैं और ऐसे हम लोग फिल्में देखते थे और हर दशक में हम हमें कुछ ना कुछ एक नया देखने को मिला नए कलाकार देखने को मिले नया संगीत नए निर्माता निर्देशक ये कहना कि ये दशक पहले दशक से ज़्यादा बेहतर था ये कहीं ना कहीं अत्याचार होगा बहुत क्योंकि ये हर दशक में कोई ना कोई एक एक हाँ कुछ कुछ नया लाया है नए कलाकारों को पेश किया है और आज भले ही हम बैठ करके यहाँ कह सकें कि जो 50 का दशक था जो 60 का दशक था वो अच्छा था लेकिन आज से 10-20 साल बाद लोग कहेंगे कि आज का दशक जो है बहुत सुंदर लगा हुआ आज का दशक तो बहुत स्पेशल है ही बिकॉज बहुत बेहतरीन फिल्में बन रही है या पिंक में इट इज़ द फर्स्ट टाइम इन हिंदी सिनेमा द वर्ड वर्जनिटी इज स्पोकन a reference is being made to virginity otherwise if a hindi film heroine has to be completely pure agree meeta ya zyada zyada kehte hain uske paon bhari ho gaye piku because it brought in uh, a film which had really no story it was just a relationship between a uh, daughter and a father and there was a great amount of identification uh, with the daughters of the world and particularly in india because many of the daughters who saw the film um for the first time invited their parents and their fathers to come along to see it again because they identified with that relationship pink of course um, the issue was so strong and so valuable and so pertinent in today's times that it was something that needed to be said and it had to be said in as powerful a manner as possible i'm really very grateful to uh, Shuji Sarkar and uh, Anirudh and uh, Ronnie Lahiri for making that film and even thinking about it and thinking about it not so much in a way to preach the content but I felt to just touch it very briefly and leave a lasting impression devising that last comment of the film no means no was by itself uh, very debatable when we were discussing the script uh, it was felt by the writers and the directors at that time that in the final summation of the court scene i would get up and make a long speech uh, which would encapsulate all that had happened in the film from the start to the end but i felt that having said so much already and and, and all the lawyers that were arguing for and against it said so much that really wasn't needed 
And because uh, Deepak Segal, who is the character in the film, was hesitant in the beginning because of his bipolar condition uh, to make any kind of argument in court, he would stand up and say, uh, no questioning, Your Honor, or no, Your Honor. I felt if we played on the word no, it would just fall in line with the character. And then the writers and us thought that, why can't he just work on the word no? And I thought that that was a brilliant piece of writing by Vitesh Shah when he discovered this sentence. And the way he put it that when a woman says no, you need to stop. And it can be anybody, your friend, your partner, your, your sex worker, even your own wife. And I thought that that was extremely powerful. And I'm so happy to have been associated with a film of this nature. Because in many ways, it almost became um, revolutionary. And the tagline became the, the tagline of the nation. And uh, in some of our interviews that we did during the promotion of the film um, with the media, there were at least two instances where uh, the lady interviewer actually broke down in tears while she was interviewing us. That's how it affected many people and many women. We still have a long way to go and we hear of some uh, incredibly hideous uh, incidents that keep happening in our country. And I do pray and hope that they stop. And I do hope and pray that films like Pink will bring in some sense into these uh, terrible incidents that keep happening. A couple of technical things have changed. Uh, there's no longer film, so I don't know whether we should start referring to the industry as a film industry because we're not using film anymore. It's all digital. Uh, that's the difference. With, with that difference, um, a lot of the making procedure has changed. Uh, for me as an artist, uh, we were so conscious uh, in our earlier years uh, of not wasting film because it was the most expensive product uh, uh, in the costing of the film. And so every time we went up to give a shot, we were terribly, terribly conscious that we have to finish it in one take or either we're going to get thrown out of the film or we're never going to get another chance. So having lived with that kind of phenomena and the danger that you have to get it right uh, the very first time was kind of limiting us in case we wanted to improve in the next day. We, we never got an opportunity. Many a times, uh, for example, working with the Rishida, Rishikesh Mukherjee, I used to tell them, Rishida, can I uh, have another take? He said, no, no, this is take very good. I said, please, Dada, ek take or de dije. Theek hai, take karo. So these were some of the limitations that we lived with. But now um, it's digital. The camera doesn't stop and the producer doesn't care if it doesn't stop because it's just limitless. And we use this to great effect in the film Pink and I keep referring to that because the entire courtroom scene was shot with seven digital cameras and there were you know, 20, 30 pages of scenes that just went on endlessly without stopping or without cutting. But each camera was catching some character, some actor that was involved in the scene. So it's, it's not like you went, said your lines, and then went back to your vanity van or your makeup room and didn't bother about what was happening next. You did your shot and you were still involved in the scene because even when you were walking back, to your chair in the set, you were being followed by the camera and your reactions were being noted. Uh, this was uh, something very revealing. There was a lot of honesty in the way it happened. Uh, there was a lot of uh, concentrated interest in what was going on. Normally what would happen that you would do a close up and go away and not bother uh, with what your colleague was going to do or how he was going to perform or enact that scene. If you had a, a double shot, yes, you are aware of it. But sometimes when they're doing a close-up, you, you're not there. But here we were in, in the world of digital cinema, absolutely involved in everybody, every person that was sitting in the scene, even though he wasn't saying anything. We would be having the liberty to notice him and 
prepare ourselves for what was going to come next as naturally as possible. So that was the technical difference. The other thing that we notice now is uh, many women on set. Uh, in my time, there were just two, the leading lady and her mother as a chaperone. But now you have uh, almost 50% of the workforce, and that is really creditable, the workforce, all managed by young girls, whether it is uh, in production, whether it is in the camera department, whether it is in the continuity department. They're just looking after everything, and it's just wonderful to see the kind of dedication and devotion that they put in. Um, we rely a lot on them because for some reason we feel that the ladies are never going to make a mistake. And uh, it works out really, yes. They are very efficient and I really love the moment when I'm on set because I just feel free to be able to say my lines and be involved in the scene and not worry about what my continuity is or what I should be wearing or which button of my jacket was open in the previous shot. Uh, these were things that we had to look after ourselves in my, in my time. But now, uh, there are wonderful ladies that come around and, and, and do this for you. But really want to compliment that entire atmosphere. Um, but look at not just the workforce, but look at the women writers and directors who have come forward and done so brilliantly well. In the last uh, two or three years, four or five years, we've had some very prominent directors um, and we've had uh, excellent writers and I hope that this continues because uh, really we, we need them to come forward and tell the men that they are better than them. Because cinema is uh, traditional and contemporary and the club is old world and modern at the same time. If you take a walk down the swimming pool, you will see three generations or sometimes two generations of fathers jumping into the swimming pool. So thank you Nishi and Dinesh Khanna for uh, being a part of this event. I was very clear that I wanted to start the evening with the film Heritage Foundation film because so many of our classics and so many of our silent films have been ravaged with time, destroyed by either natural disasters or due to our own negligence. My friend Shivendra Singh Dungarpur, I got it right, has been working on this since 2014. He is dedicated, devoted, and committed to the cause of conservation, preservation, restoration of moving images. And it is a cause that the media needs to get sensitized to and give him prominence. I also have to thank Raindrop Media, Rohini Ayer, who came to me when she was just 16 years old. She walked into my cabin and said, I think I'm going to make a great journalist. And I didn't look at her CV and give her a job. Today, no movie is complete without the drop of the rain. And also, she's helped in this event. How can, my argument was, okay, how can I, if I am documenting milestones, get into the sidetrack of trivia? I'm privileged that I found Penguin Random House, who understood my point of view and respected the manuscript as it was. It is their vision that they were able to package this book in a contemporary address to the younger generation, peppered with dialogues from films and illustrations of posters. It is the publisher's solitary decision to have Mr. Bachchan on the cover. They were very clear that they wanted Amitabh Bachchan on the cover because he has the most outstanding body of work which started in 1969 in South Hindustani and it continues to 2016. The conflict was which of Amitabh Bachchan's movies still should be put on the cover. The media has exhausted adjectives to introduce him, so I'm going to do a little recap. Where once upon a time, in India, when I was a cub reporter in 1978, Amitabh Bachchan was not talking to the media, and he was a superstar. 
1989, when I launched a magazine, 